JJ Jinx. Truck stop. This is the entire haul for last month's Smoky Mountain Knife Works Officers Club box. And uh, I've got something to say about each one of these. <sighs> I'd like to begin with these three. The Smith & Wesson Trio. Um, well, they really went for quantity over quality last month. Uh, <laughs> and... Here's what I've got to say about that. I've got a problem with pretty much every one of these knives. I'll start with this one. It's really hard to open. And, eh, I don't know. I guess once you get it open, that's the important part, right? Because then you use it, who cares how it opens? Uh, well, when you close it, I think I noted when I first experienced this knife, it's got a hell of a strong detent and it makes a satisfying sound when you close it. But here's the thing, <laughs> that that sound is not the sound of the detent. It turns out it's got a major design flaw. Um, I think the easiest way to see it is if you look at that spacer all the way in the back, you might notice there's a little mick right there. What could that possibly be from? That's from the blade actually colliding with it, and that's the noise that you hear when you close it. Yeah, they actually somehow got this knife entirely through the design phase without realizing that there's just not enough room for the knife to close without it smashing into that spacer, which leaves a pretty nasty nick on the blade uh, and makes it bad for cutting. So I carried this knife for one day before realizing that. Uh, and then I was like, I, I just can't carry it anymore. That's too big of a flaw, you know? Otherwise, it's it's a neat little frame lock. Um, the pocket clip was nice because it's not too tight, but kept it secure. <clears throat> Otherwise, yeah, I, I just can't see myself ever looking at this knife again. Then we get to this one, which was probably the cheapest one in the whole lot. Uh, definitely less than $10. I don't necessarily remember the price. It's the Extreme Ops. Um... This is also a knife that I carried for like a day and I couldn't stand it for several reasons. First of all, uh, it's got no thumb studs, no flipper tab. You're literally just, yeah, it's like a classic folder. You, you, you gotta grab the thumb nick and go. The knurling came out of the box a bit worn and that's okay. Uh, I, you know, it's kind of a neat look and it's going to kind of look like that over time and repeated use but i thought it was kind of weird that like it started like that um like it was dropped on the ground and kicked around a little bit before they put it in the box <laughs> but this one too has a major flaw and it might just be this one that somehow snuck through their quality control i guess smith and wesson is going the way of benchmade <laughs> well here it is if you look down through the middle of the knife um, you might notice that some of these spacers, in fact, well, all of them, appear to be a little asymmetrical. You've got the uh, wider part of the spacer and then this smaller part up here. That's because they're not seated correctly. That is not supposed to look like that. This knife is like bulging because they're not seated. And you can see it when you try to figure out, you know, the blade centering. And I go, hang on, there's something not right about this. Uh, and then I realized this knife wasn't even put together correctly to begin with. And furthermore, have a look at the screws. Uh, well, first of all, this one all the way at the end is like completely stripped out. This one here is missing its head. <laughs> like they screwed it down and it just snapped off. And that screw there is also pretty mangled. Whoever was putting the knife together 
just kind of shrug their shoulders and like fuck it it ships <laughs> that that's ter that's terrible <laughs> Uh, I don't know what else to say about that. This was the only Smith & Wesson knife that came in the box that um, didn't piss me off. <laughs> but it's very kind of mediocre. Nor uh, it's, it's normal. There's nothing really notable about it. And sadly, that's what made it good. Um, <laughs> it is comfy, but it's cheap. Uh, it just didn't have any of the problems the other ones had, and for a cheap knife, it's got decent action, good lockup. Um, I probably carried this knife the most uh, out of all of them, just because I really wanted to find something wrong with it, just to, you know, make a video where it's like, Smith & Wesson sucks, all three of these knives are awful. But uh, nope, this one was mediocre enough for me to not hate it, and that is enough for me. Now this, um, Victorinox knife. I started off not really liking it too much because it's big and bulky and heavy, but I ended up actually kind of liking it a lot, and here's why. First of all, someone pointed out in the comments when I posted the video where I first opened it, I was like, man, this liner is like really hard to get in there, and uh, why would Victorinox design something so difficult to use? And then someone was like, no, dummy, you push the button. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, it turns out you push on the actual emblem and it moves the liner. See that? Well, that's a freaking game changer. I love this. It's such a cool mechanism and it's like hidden in plain sight. I, I just didn't read the instructions, I guess. But I'm really, really happy that someone pointed that out to me. Uh, because now, that, that just automatically made me like the knife even more. It's a very unobtrusive way to have that liner lock, you know? Uh, you don't have to worry about it being in the way of your finger when you hold the knife, and you're not really in any danger of catching or having it close when you don't want it to, and it's also kind of neat that, you know, they have this functional decoration built right into the knife. Now, the blade is awesome. It is long and slender, and it cuts like a dream. Uh, it's that, you know, Victorinox quality that we all fawn over. Uh, my only gripe about it, though, is this, um, I know, Victorinox hole? <laughs> it, it's, it's well cut. It's chamfered. It's comfortable. They did it well. It's just kind of a strange shape, and, like, if... If that's what you're supposed to use to comfortably open the knife one-handed, uh, it could be done better. It's not that comfy. But again, you know, like I said about this knife, once you get it open, that's the important part, right? So I can't be too mad at it. Now, as far as like a multi-tool kind of knife goes, um, I'm not a huge fan of multi-tools. I figure rather than have a whole bunch of tools that are done half-assed, I'd rather have individual tools that do it right, you know? But as big as this knife is, it actually doesn't have a whole lot of tools. You got the blade, you got the saw, which this saw, by the way, is awesome. It, it It's really good. <laughs> uh, so I guess I take back what I said about having a lot of tools, but none of them work well. Um, my only complaint, it's not really a complaint, is like, there are a lot of burrs on it, but they sort of fall off as you use it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like a pull saw. It's, it's good. Nice and long. And then you just got the bottle opener and the can opener. And uh, this is a good can opener. I actually did use it to open a can. I mean, on the one hand, who uses these to open cans anymore? <laughs> they just have that pull tab. But on the other hand, I had to do it for science. Now, I've used the um, older style, I guess other style can openers before. As an example, I got one of these old Camp King style knives, uh, yeah, like that style, um, and it's a little awkward. It's 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 hard to get purchase on the lid of the lip of the can with this little hooked, monstrous looking thing. This works really well. It was it was very easy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and then on the back, you just have the two tools: the Phillips head screwdriver and the awl. I don't think I'll ever use an awl. Uh, but, you know what, Phillips head screws are very common, so if you're going to put a screwdriver in there at all, 
that's the one you want to put in. So that and that's it. it. It's it's big for me, but it's just thin enough to be usable. And I guess that's the point, right? I actually looked in on getting um, one of these where it's just the blade, and they do make those, just because I liked this mechanism so much, and I wanted um, to try it out just with the blade, you know. But yeah, they're. It's, it's like, I don't know, 30 or $40, and I think they only come in black, uh, so I never did get it, because I think I know exactly what it would be like. It would be excellent, but uh, in the end, you know, it doesn't have a pocket clip, so there's that too. This little Buck Bantam actually got a hell of a lot of pocket time. I kind of got bored of the Smith & Wessons and... I didn't carry these two so much because they don't have pocket clips. Well, neither does this one, but it's small enough to fit in the fifth pocket. And so that's where it resided, and I actually got a lot of use out of it. Even though it's it's so tiny, it's it's it was just nice for opening boxes, which is what I mostly used it for. Um, I did some other things with it and kind of put a chip in the blade. <laughs> I'm not sure what how I did that. Um, but having something small but good uh, was actually a good experience for me. I, I think I'd like to find maybe some other tiny knives that, you know, are actually good and not gas station novelty knives. Uh, it is a little bit flimsy, you know, it's got that Benchmade bug out flex <laughs> that nobody really seems to complain about. I don't know why that knife receives so much praise, but uh, this one gets. A lot of praise from me. Oh, let's talk about the knife that I think stole the show. <laughs> so this knife was like the token Rough Rider knife that they include in every month's box. Uh, and it was such an excellent experience carrying and using this knife. I've been saying for a long time that I've been wanting to get it back into, you know, carrying traditional folders. And this one just blew me away. Um, I, I keep trying to find a flaw. <laughs> <laughs> it's well constructed you know there's there's no gaps um, the half stop really works for me uh, it's got good uh, what, what do they call that walk and talk or whatever the look of the brass with the black liner and then the red you know fire engine red scales um, which is my carta by the way it, it just looks so good and the blade was a dream I love this trailing point job that they've done. Uh, the choil is excellent. It's got that sharp kind of tooth cutout. Um, everything about this knife is so cool. I think they called it a bow trapper. Uh, and it was only like $13, I think, 12 or 13 bucks. Now, the fact that this knife was best in show for the month, in my opinion, says two things. Number one, uh, the rest of the knives were kind of mediocre or worse. Uh, but number two, not to diminish from how awesome this knife is, uh, I think I would have really liked it no matter which month I got it, you know? Uh, and they also have this available in black. I'd like to see it in more colors. This is a knife that I could see myself wanting to collect all the different varieties. Uh, you know, make it in blue and make it in green and yellow. Uh, come out with the obligatory Damascus version for a hundred bucks, you know? <laughs> what could make this knife better? Well, uh, I know a lot of people usually ask the question, well, what kind of steel has it got? Is it Maximet or VG10 or what? And it's like, okay, fine. It's a $13 Rough Rider knife. It's not going to survive being hurled into the sun. But that doesn't mean it's a bad knife. I, I get kind of tired of the steel snobs out there where they, they've got to get their VG 45VN or whatever, and then they weep and they moan and they cry when the knife blade shatters because they dropped it a foot, you know? <laughs> it's like, dude, you know those steels are brittle. It's just, you know, the way materials work. But uh, this blade will not shatter. It also won't hold an edge forever, but, you know, pros and cons. Holy crap, I forgot to mention this one. <laughs> this is the Condor Knives uh, Cleaver, which I did use, and then I put it away and never used it again. 
I cut some chicken with it outside because, uh, you know, that's sort of what these things are made for. And it, it worked just fine. I don't have a lot of experience with cleavers, um, but, you know, it cleaned up well and it cut through the meat. And I like the micarta scales. I think micarta in general has a kind of a neat look to it. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I didn't carry it around. I didn't get a chance to, you know, use it to its full potential or do, you know, some kind of field testing or whatever people do with knives these days. There's that one guy who, he'll like take knives out to a rock quarry and smash it onto like, uh, <laughs> some granite or something. Uh, I don't think I would ever buy this personally. Um, but I mean... I have it now. I'm sorry, I'm just not a cleaver dude, you know? <laughs> it cuts chicken. What more do you want? Oop, having a little trouble here. Yes, got it in right this time. I'm kind of hoping that, unlike this past month, <laughs> they go the other direction and have, you know, quality over quantity. Uh, I just got the box, and it feels a little bit lighter, so that could be a good sign. But I'm going to end this video, open that thing up, 